In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Aurora Hostile Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. All right, let's get on with the review. This is the Aurora Hestile fountain pen. Now, before I go over this pen, I want to quickly talk about the Aurora brand. Aurora is one of my absolute favorite pen manufacturers. They have been producing pens in Italy for over a hundred years, and they are the only Italian fountain pen brand to still be producing their own nibs in-house. Anytime you're buying a new Italian fountain pen that isn't an Aurora, you're likely getting a nib that is produced by Bach or Yovo or maybe Schmidt. There's nothing wrong with that, but I think it is worth pointing out that Aurora is still producing its nibs in its own factory in Italy. Now let's go over the Aurora Hastile fountain pen. This pen was designed in 1969 by Marco Zanuso, and it is one of the very few fountain pens that is on permanent display at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. I know sometimes I've seen people say that the Lamy 2000 is part of the MoMA's permanent collection, but it is not. I believe that was just part of a temporary collection. But anyway, this is one of those few pens that the MoMA thought was significant enough design-wise to keep on permanent display. And actually, I'll put a link to the MoMA's page on this pen in the show notes so you can see pictures of the pen that they have on display there. Now, this pen is made out of a material that Aurora calls eco steel. I believe it to just be stainless steel, but I'm not 100% sure on that. There's a couple of interesting design details on this pen. First up is the clip. If you look at the clip, it is essentially flush against the cap. The way that this works is it is spring-loaded, and when you stick something in the clip here, it just lifts out of the cap. Let's see if I can show you this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But basically that piece there comes out. The other thing that is interesting on this pen so if we take the cap off, there are these two little spacers, essentially, on the end of this pen barrel. These spacers are spring-loaded, so if you push on them, they kind of go in a little bit. And basically what they do is they prevent the cap from ever coming in contact with the metal part of the barrel. That's a pretty cool design. You're not gonna see lines on this pen from posting the pen. The grip section, it has these vertical ridges, and then horizontally, this way, there are these kind of very fine micro ridges. So there's a lot of texture on here, which is a pretty nice thing to have on a very thin pen like this. And then, we have the nib, which is dirty, sorry about that. This nib is 14 karat gold. The original, as far as I know, only came in 14 karat gold, but Aurora does now make a stainless steel version. And on this pen, you can see there's 14 karat here, and that is it. There's no other markings on this nib. One interesting design piece, let's see, are you gonna be able to see it? is when you look at the side profile of this nib, it's actually symmetrical with the feed, almost to the point where you think, oh, I could just pull this off and put it on the other side of the feed. It's an interesting design detail. They put the serial number down here on the bottom of the plastic rip section. It is a cartridge converter. It takes proprietary Aurora cartridge or a Parker cartridge. This is actually a Parker cartridge. I will show you the converter when I show you the box. Every Hustile comes with that converter, so you don't really have to worry about finding the right one. But if you do buy an old one of these and it doesn't have the converter, just know that the standard Aurora converter will not work with this pen. So those are the main details of the pen. In terms of size, we're looking at about 138 millimeters capped. Uncapped, we're looking at about 121 millimeters. Posted, we're looking at about 155 millimeters. In terms of width, 
On the barrel, we're about nine millimeters, and on the grip section, the grip section's straight, it doesn't taper. We're at 8.4 millimeters, so very thin, very small step down though between that and the grip section. So, you know, this cap is extremely thin. That's very nice on a thin pen like this to not have a big step down to the section. Now, just as a comparison, this is a wood pencil. Let's see, how wide is this? This is 8.1, is that right? Yep, so it's thicker than a wood pencil, <laughs> uh, but just barely. And then as a comparison to, here's the Lamy CP1, which is another very thin fountain pen. I did a review for this fountain pen. I'll put a link up on the screen if you want to see that. This is a very nice thin fountain pen. But anyway, this is a thicker pen than this. This is the thinnest fountain pen that I own, and it's one of the thinnest fountain pens that you can buy. Now, in terms of weight, We're looking at 17.21 grams and 10.74 grams uncapped. This is quite a light pen. It does feel to be of good quality. If you're gonna write for a long time, I recommend writing with it uncapped, but this cap does sit down a decent amount on the body. Because it's so thin, I would recommend writing with it uncapped if you're gonna write for a long time. So this is the Hastil pen box. It is a steel cylinder. And so my pen is old. I don't exactly know how old it is, but anyway, the box is, you know, has some marks on it. I assume there would be an outer box to this. I do not have that outer box. The cylinder splits in half. And then here we have the Aurora pen, Hastil made in Italy. It clicks into place here, so it's very secure in the box. And then here you can see Aurora and a little arrow here. Basically this slides open. And here we have the Aurora warranty card. Guarantees the product against any manufacturing or material defect for a period of five years. The 14 karat white gold nib is hand tested. This is quite a old pen because Yaffa pen has not been the U.S. importer for Aurora for quite a while. So this is an older pen for sure. Now in here we it comes with two Aurora cartridges. I believe they're original. And then here is the converter that I was talking about. It's a squeeze converter so you just stick this part on the, the feed and you'd squeeze in the ink bottle. It's very common style converter for pens in the 70s and the 80s as well. The original version of the Lamy CP1 had a squeeze sack converter just like this. I haven't personally used this because the, the pen is old. I'm worried that I'll damage the converter or the converter might leak, but looking at this, I don't think it's ever been used, actually. Anyway, that is the box. All right, let's do the writing sample. This is the Aurora Hastil, and I believe this is a medium, though I'm not 100% sure, as uh, this is an old fountain pen. This is Parker black. some fast writing. Now in terms of line variation, it's pretty stiff. I don't recommend trying to apply any pressure uh, 
to this nib. In terms of reverse writing, I actually haven't tried this until now. It's seeming like you can do that. I'm not seeing any issues where um, it looks like it's drying up. Yeah, this will do reverse writing. It's not the smoothest, but you definitely get a much finer line out of that. In terms of nib performance, I don't really have any complaints. It's quite a smooth nib. There really aren't any issues that I have to point out with this pen. If you have one of their bigger nibbed pens, like this is a Aurora Optima, and this is kind of their premium high-end nib. These come in 14 karat and 18 karat gold. These nibs have a very unique feel to them. They are purposefully toothy. That is not something that I get on the Aurora Hestiel. So if you're used to the unique feel of these big Aurora nibs, you're not quite gonna find that here. But this is a very nice, very smooth nib and the performance is really good. So I definitely recommend the writing experience from this pen. It's very nice. So Aurora Hestiel Fountain Pen pros and cons. Number one pro would be the design. This is a pen that has a excellent modern Italian design. It's on permanent display at the MoMA in New York. If you want a pen with a modern design, it's hard to beat. I also really like this flush clip. I can't think of another fountain pen that has a clip that sits flush on the body like this. I like these spring-loaded spacers on the back so that you don't scratch the pen body. I have used this pen quite a bit and the barrel looks really good. I don't see any marks from the cap, which is quite nice for a steel pen like this. I like the symmetrical design of the nib when viewed in profile. I like the large proprietary cartridges that this pen takes. Those are my main pros and cons for this pen. Pros anyway. Now in terms of cons, the price is a pretty big con if you're buying this pen new. In Europe, the retail price for this pen is 495 euros. In the United States, I've seen the retail price listed as $685. This is so expensive new, I don't see the value there. I mean, for instance, this is a Aurora Ypsilon lacquer pen. This pen has, you know, a solid 14 karat gold nib, lacquered body from Aurora, same excellent quality, and you can get these somewhere in the 200s. So $685 for this. You better love the design. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I think with the new one, Aurora, you know, is using old tooling and reviving that old stuff basically that they used to make this pen, but I just, I don't see the value there. I bought this pen for $80 on eBay. I think you can regularly get very good examples of this pen for $80 to $120. Uh, don't buy this pen new, I guess is what I would say. The other thing that I would say is because it is so skinny, it's only slightly thicker than a pencil, it's not the most comfortable for a super long writing session. It's still pretty comfortable, and I like writing with this a lot, but I'm not going to do pages of journaling with this. That's pretty much it. Those are my pros and cons for the Aurora Hostile Fountain Pen. Do you guys have this pen? If you like this pen, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.